The following program is presented by the Diocese of Venice in Florida. Please join the Most Reverend Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice in Florida, for the annual Catholic Memorial Mass. It will be at 3 p.m. on Thursday, November 11th at Patriot Plaza and is held in recognition of and to honor the men and women who have served and continue to serve and defend our country. Patriot Plaza is located at Sarasota National Cemetery, five miles east of I-75 and exit 205. All are invited to attend and veterans and active military are encouraged to wear their uniforms. For more information, contact Gail Artie at the Diocese of Venice at 941-484-9543 or email artie at dioceseofvenice.org. The Diocese of Venice in Florida presents the Mass. This morning, the TV Mass comes to you from St. Anne Parish in Naples, Florida. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, Rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Good morning and welcome. And so let us continue to give glory and praise to our God by calling upon his name, through his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And so for a few moments, let us reflect on how we have lived in the presence of our God, loving one another as God indeed loves us. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood to strengthen and to nourish us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so we continue to give glory and praise to our God by proclaiming, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father, amen. And so we pray. Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep from us all adversity, so that un unhindered in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. For we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. In those days, Elijah the prophet went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, please bring me a small cup full of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called after her, please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now, I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. 
but first make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah said. She was able to eat for a year and he and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord keeps faith forever, secures justice for the oppressed gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets captives free. Praise the Lord, my soul. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now, once for all, he had appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is anointed that human beings die once, and after this the judgment, also so Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said to the crowds, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, in places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows as a pretext, recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she from, their po she from her poverty has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Who can tell me what a widow is? Yes, young man, stand up. A woman who lost her husband. Exactly, a woman who lost her husband. And in today's stories, in the book that we read, okay, from uh, the prophet, and from the gospel, we hear of two women who are widows. Now, widows in the ancient world, in the time of Jesus, were considered very vulnerable because of the fact that they were 
left alone. There was no one who was going to take care of them. No one was going to help them except out of charity. And so when I, uh, uh, yeah, Elijah goes and does what? He asks this woman to do what? To make him a little cake and give him some water. And she says, I'm about to do that just for myself and then I'm gonna die. Me and my son will die. But she does what he asks. The woman in the gospel story, she puts in two coins, two cents into the temple treasury because of the fact that's all she had to live on. The fact of the matter is, the lessons that we learn today, it doesn't matter if you're rich or powerful. It doesn't matter whether you're a genius. It doesn't matter whether you got lots of things going on in your life. All that matters is that you're dedicated to God. That's all that matters in our life, is that we are willing to do what God asks of us, like the woman with Elijah. The fact is that she gave of her want. So did the woman at the temple treasury, gave of her want. We give of ourselves to one another. That's what we're called to do to give of ourselves to one another, to help one another along the journey, to help one, along, one another along the road, so that what? All of us get to where we need to go. Where do we need to go? Where do we want to go? We all want to go to heaven. That's the important destiny of all of us. That's the destiny of life, is to get to heaven so that we can be with our loving God forever. May God be blessed. As we have gathered in faith, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of our merciful Father, we place before him our prayers. Pope Francis, Bishop Duane, all bishops and leaders of the church, may the Holy Spirit continue guiding them in their service to God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, may God's wisdom inspire them in seeking the common good above all else. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, and the mourning, may God's gracious mercy bring them comfort and healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they find peace and comfort in the arms of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those intentions that we hold within the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Ever loving and gracious Father, we humbly pray that you bless the petitions we place before you today. For we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
And so we pray that our sacrifice may be found acceptable by God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we too praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna. the font of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. We Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and all who minister in your name. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and in all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples and to us, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's love and his peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
And so we conclude our prayer. Nourished by this sacred gift, O Lord, we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us for his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for watching TV Mass. The TV Mass is made possible because of contributions from viewers like you. To make a contribution to TV Mass, please send your check to the Diocese of Venice, care of TV Mass, 1000 Pinebrook Road, Venice, Florida, 34285. And you can view this Mass anytime you like on the Diocese of Venice website. Visit dioceseofvenice.org and click on the Televised Mass button. Please join the Most Reverend Frank J. Duane, Bishop of the Diocese of Venice in Florida, for the annual Catholic Memorial Mass. It will be at 3 p.m. on Thursday, November 11th at Patriot Plaza and is held in recognition of and to honor the men and women who have served and continue to serve and defend our country. Patriot Plaza is located at Sarasota National Cemetery, five miles east of I-75 and exit 205. All are invited to attend, and veterans and active military are encouraged to wear their uniforms. For more information, contact Gail Artie at the Diocese of Venice at 941-484-9543 or email artie at dioceseofvenice.org. Many are the blessings he bears to those who trust in his way.